Here we go. All right. Read all about it. Okay. Okay. Read all about it. It's going to be a little hot. The room, the room is very bouncy because it's all hardwood floors because it's a fancy hotel. All right. And then, uh, let's see. How do headphones work? You put the L in this one, this side of the head? Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, wow. Too good. Fucking first time. Forget about it. All right. Are you going to scream from your yurt? Whatever the... Read all about oh, it. Oh, 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 Read all it. about it. Hear ye, hear ye. There it Come is. Come to session. The newspaper will be read. Welcome. <laughs> is, I've never thought to question... Are you conflating? Is here ye here? That's not the newspaper boy. No, it's not. That's is it the like constable. the town crier? Uh, the town crier is uh, the precursor to, it was before the printing press. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm a little mixed. I'm a little, yeah, sort of. Uh... A lot of time it was like a friar. A friar would say, here ye, here ye. And then that became a newspaper boy. How did you come up with friar? Um, like, uh, Monty Python movies. I was thinking of a Monty Python movie. Okay. Yeah. That's history. How Um, are you, man? You woke up in LA. I'm a little tired. I woke up in LA and, uh, I I could barely get to the airport because my entire family, not me, got their booster shot yesterday. Dennis Gubbins was able to get us in ahead of some African-American people. Oh, that's sweet. And uh, they all woke up completely out of it. My wife has 102 temperature, and she is dying. And my son felt marginally better. And then I went and got my... Cause, so they wouldn't drive me to the airport this morning. So then I had to go wake my daughter. And she goes, just take an Uber. I'm like, I fucking... I put a roof over your head. I feed you. You have a goddamn car. I buy you gifts. You can drive me to the fuck. I mean, I am tired of the fucking free ride that my kids have been getting. My my daughter especially, very very unappreciative of the full free ride. <laughs> okay. She's 18. She's 18. In many communities, she would have been married off by now. She listens or traded or sold She listens to the podcast where you've said, like, I hope they stay home. I hope they move home. I was, like, incredulous. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'd like them to stay home, but I'd also like them to pay rent and pick up a dish. That's all. (laughs) Okay. What age can I start charging rent? It's an overly nurturing house over there. What age can I start charging rent? Uh, I mean, you know, a nice marker is after fresh, you know, after senior year, after when they move back, you know, in a way, but I guess that's a hard time for them. Maybe the first job. First job makes sense. It's gotta be a decent job though. So 29. So 37. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I don't like, I walk around here and you know, half the time I don't have Olivia half the time I'm here alone and, uh, I don't like me expecting a free ride. I get in fights with me all the time. This I find this fucking guy, Mike walks around here, no job, doesn't fucking bathe half the days, pajama pants till five, is expecting dinner to just appear. Yeah. Fucking lazy freeloader. And then wait and then one week he's in Wyoming, the next week he's in fucking Northern California. Yeah. He's all I'm over like, the place. What are all these tissues that crumbled up on your bed? And why, and why does my laptop keep smelling like coconut oil? What the fuck is going on here? Is the coconut oil make you feel like you're jerking off in an exotic place? No, I just feel like I'm going to the beach. I'm going to put some it's a little, a little hints of copper tone in there. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's exotic. Your dick is going to get a tan. Uh, from the glow of your laptop going through the oil. Um, so uh, so I am in Phoenix, I should tell people. I just got a phone call. I was sitting with you on the golf course yesterday yeah. having lunch after our very fun round of golf. That was a fun day. That was fun. Um, and uh, I got a, an email from my agent to see if I wanted to come to Phoenix the next day to do uh, Saturday and Sunday night. 
at this club CB uh, at CB Live CB Live. Paul Reiser got sick and had to cancel at the last minute. I don't All know right. what he has. We wish him well. We hope he's doing better. Maybe We've, he's an early adopter of this new little guy going around the planet. Right. I hope not. Well, it's from Africa, so he'll know he has it if fill in the blank, Mike. Nope, not touching Come it. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. From Africa? <laughs> It'll, this won't haunt you. No. All right. No, I, I, this will not haunt me. Saying pass. <laughs> I look like shit. I, we're on YouTube, right. you guys, but I got a very bad lighting situation. Well, all right. You should explain. There's a mural, I guess, on the wall behind you, but it looks like you are broadcasting from inside a yurt. Yes. And it, it and looks it's got, like there are two beds behind you in a dome. Right. It's uh, it's two beds, which I prefer. When I stay in a hotel room, a lot of people want the king size bed. I like to feel tight in a bed. I like to be enclosed, and I also like to use the other bed to put shit on. I like to use it as a giant table. So I like right. the two beds, but I don't like that there's uh, no carpeting. It's a hardwood floor, which they think is fancy, but I find to be cold. And uh, and the recording probably sounds a little echoey because of it. No, it sounds good. Do you ever do things like, uh, probably not because of Aaron, but sleep on the other side of the bed? Like, I'll sleep on the other side. I have a king bed. I'm all alone. I'll sleep on the other side sometimes. Have you ever switched hands, which which hand you wear your watch on? I don't wear a watch. Okay. But I switch well, my wedding ring once in a while. It fits on your other hand? No, into my pocket when I go get a massage. There it now, is. Yeah, I put it like when I play golf, I take it off and I put it in my golf bag. And then when I put it back on, I'll put it on my right hand for a while. You know, oh, wow. move it around. I know. Mine, mine wouldn't fit. My right fingers were bigger than my left fingers. Do you ever put nail polish on your left hand and jerk off at that? Hold on, let me get a pen and paper. No, I do not. Uh, I think Louis C.K. had a joke about how when his hand falls asleep, he jerks off with it. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so, I uh, no, but like if you put your watch on the hand that never carries it, it's very bizarre. And like even like, oh, let me look at my watch. There's something... You're, you carry your, you realize how imbalanced you are basically in things in life. Like, like I don't even carry myself the right way. Or have you ever just decided, Hey, I'm going to switch shoulders on which, which uh, shoulder I wear my backpack on. The yeah. thing constantly falls off my left shoulder. Right. It's, and it's because my body, anyway, I think they say it's good to do those things once in a while. I, when I talk on the phone, I can only talk on my right ear. I don't know if I have bad hearing on my left ear or my right arm is dominant, but I can, I'm not comfortable talking with the phone in my left hand. Most people talk uh, uh, with their good ear. Listen. Yeah. So that's yeah. what's going on with you. Yeah. Anyway, listen, so much to talk stuff. about. Yeah. So much to get to. I feel like, um, you know, we, we, we could talk about Thanksgiving, but was that this week? Nope. That was so last week. We, but we could talk about it, of course. Um, we could it was talk last week. We could talk. Oh, Gubbins was very upset that when I was talking about his friend Chris, uh, the bass player for Jane's Addiction, that I played golf with, he was. Uh, I didn't mention that I met him through Dennis Gubbins. So, oh yeah. So should we talk about Dennis's birthday party? I had a legitimate excuse why I couldn't go. My, my ears were completely clogged, which well, is a whole other story. They're not clogged anymore. That would have been helpful at this party because there was so <laughs> many annoying people talking to me. I would have wished my ears were clogged. No, I'm kidding. It was a great party. Um, there was a, there's a woman there that Gubbins has a crush on oh. who, who is uh teaches yoga, you know, which right, right out of the gate. That's that, that makes you an eight. No matter what you even look like. If you're a yoga instructor, you're an eight. All right. What and was his name? His name is uh, Sirhan Jeffrey. Wow. That's, that's a this fictional person is loaded with details. Okay. <laughs> Who else was there? There was, uh, you know, the usual gang. Knutson was there. Aaron showed up. 
Erin talked to uh, a lot of people. She's very mm-hmm. social. Erin's very good at a party, I've noticed. Wow. She can get in there with anybody. She can talk to absolutely anybody. Maybe you have uh, lessened your dominance or your feeling to dominate at parties and you're and you're noticing for the first time like how she can hold her own. It's you know what? That's not a joke. That's absolutely true. Ah. I, I don't dominate at parties anymore. I lay back. I'm, I've become a listener at parties. Yeah. I don't what want the pressure. She, what, what she said. Right. The only time I'm on at a party is if it's like you and Malloy and O'Neill and Mary Fitz. And, and then, then I'm just generally like having more fun. So I'm louder. But if I'm at a party with a lot of people I don't know, I'm a listener. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, I'm learning a lot about you today. Hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, Chris here has written in the document, did you raise your fist when you arrived at Gubbins' birthday party? I absolutely 100% did. I came in and I saw Gubbins through the crowd and I pointed at him and then I did the fist pump and uh, he yelled to me and I yelled to him. And they, yeah, I made it. Yeah, I made my entrance. I make my entrance. That's the exact moment you should have yelled, had a great time. See you later, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Um, all right. So the song this week was from B. Bixel. That's the, I don't know what that name means. Right. But B. Bixel wrote that song. It was cool. A little kind of sample, a little fill of us saying stuff. Yeah. No, I like that one a lot. To a funky bass. Um, I as didn't far as I said, uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. I think that's the tone I used in that. Uh, the, as far as our three main okay. uh, songwriters, getting involved there's uh tony cacase john cabrera and rob dukes are going to i put them all in touch with each other the idea is that they are going to write like a super band like the traveling wilburys or like a velvet (laughs) revolver they are going to create a theme song that may end up being the permanent theme song for the show we'll see how good it is wow all right but they've written back and forth and uh what was but, that super group part of the guys from Yes were in it and stuff? Wasn't there a they they It's literally... already a mediocre group if it's guys from Yes. Oh, here comes the mail. Uh no, it was like a literal that's what they called it a super group was how they described it. Uh I forget who was in it. In and around the lake. <laughs> Mama's Listen, come out want... of the sky and stands there. If you want incredible musician musicianship uh, during a song that describes chess, there's very, very few places to go. Yes is one of them. They have a chess song? You know it. You've sung along to it. Really? You might have even just been singing it. I'm just so, I have so much Beatles on the brain. I can't conjure it up. The Queen, uh... Fuse to die. Do 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 do. I think it's that uh, one. Oh yeah. I think uh, that is it. Oh X Y Z is the super band. All right, Chris, if you can throw some chess lyrics in here from whatever I'm. Uh, it's crazy. You've sung along to the song and and you don't even realize you're singing along to chess moves. So. Uh, Chris Cheney, by the way, was the bass player from uh, Jane's Addiction. Who you met through Dennis. Uh, yes. You forgot to say that again. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the logo this week uh, is from John Cabrera, who is a uh, practically a staff member here. Killing it. Killing oh, it with this very funny poster of the uh, Queen Mother smoking a fatty with you. I on like the, this logo. Yeah. Real nice. It's a holiday themed one. Corrections. Oh, do you got a paper to crinkle? Um, no, but let me tell you, I got a, I got an Amazon wrapper. Oh, that's, that's really good. nicer. Yeah, I'm going to do that. All right. It lasts forever in the landfills. Uh, beginning of the show this week, you called the Beatles documentary, Let It Be. It's called Get Back. Thought you, you were a huge Beatles fan. I love when people say something like that. Like, because... <laughs> Because I said the wrong name, I'm not a Beatles fan. I'm negated completely from liking the Beatles in any way. Yeah, also, 
What? Oh, it's a siren. LA's going to hell, by the way. Uh, we can talk about that later. Um, with the crime. Uh, yeah, but also it's like this super new thing about the Beatles. I thought you were a lifelong Beatles fan. Yeah. How could you dare mix up the thing that's three weeks old? Well, we're going to talk about that a lot later. Also, please tell Mike to stop referring to Ohio State as Ohio. <laughs> Michigan beat Ohio State, not Ohio. There, There is a smaller university called Ohio University. Mike is totally confusing us simpletons in the flyover states. Mike Mulroy, cousin of your old college girlfriend. Now, I can't remember if I've talked to him about my old college girlfriend. and Because I had several dozen and Wait a I don't minute. know. Is I he talking about your girlfriend or yep. mine? Oh. I had a girlfriend from Ohio. I, I mean, that's overstating it a little bit. I dated for a handful of dates a girl from Ohio. What was her name? Laura. Was it Laura Mulroy? No, it was not. Well, Let's find out. Maybe, Mike, you can write into us and tell us whose girlfriend it was and yeah, what they that? think of us now. Uh, Laura was from, uh, what's that community outside of Cleveland? Um, Akron? No, <laughs> that's a city. No, this is like, you know, like it's not Hidden Hills, but it's like something like that. It's, uh, I forget what it's called. I'll, I'll get it in a minute. Anyway. Friends, also, they, JJ uh, said. Yeah, go ahead. JJ said, so I don't think anyone has a true landline anymore because I talked about how I should get a landline in right. case the satellite gets knocked out. Or if they do, it's because the big communication companies haven't come through to change the infrastructure yet. Um, the phones run through your internet, so if your internet is down or your power is off, you have no phone. Hmm. Uh. Stand up uh, dates coming up. I didn't I didn't really listen to that. But what is the guy saying? He's there's saying a, there's, that there's no more landlines. Like the actual wiring that we used to go into your phone no longer exists. And they that that's why you get your phone service from like, you know, the same place you get your internet provider because they just yeah. run it through the internet. Yeah. I mean there was a thought I guess he brought up there, I think I heard, that like, you know, if there's an earthquake, you know, or something like that here. Uh, the landline used to still work. I think the jury's out on that, though. Even if it were a true old landline, that um, there's even an argument that cell phones m might have a better chance of working longer, even if everything goes to shit. I don't know, though. Somebody said get a ham radio. Yeah, that's what I need. Some trucker jerking off. I'm trying to get, like, you know, <laughs> updates on the president. And he's got a, he's got a, a lot, a, what do they call him, a lot lizard. I'll bring you water if you put if your wife can do do <laughs> num 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 sounds in the phone. <laughs> hey, if I can take a shit in your house, I'll give you a bottle of water. How about that? That's a fair trade. Except um, you can't flush. <laughs> he wins. You can't flush his duker. Uh, and you don't want a trucker shit. That's a big oh. shit. Yeah. With a lot of paper. Um. Stand up dates tonight. If you're listening to this on Sunday, <laughs> the 5th of December, come on out to CB Live in Phoenix. If you're there not, tomorrow night. Today's Saturday. You're there tomorrow night also? Saturday Sunday and night? Sunday night. Wow. Yeah, very right. weird gig. It's a very odd gig. And okay. then, just announced, I will be in uh, Palm Beach, Florida at the Palm Beach Improv on Christmas night and December 26th. Also, my whole family will be in Florida that whole week, and I'm going to go down and do some shows after dinner. Very, it's a West Palm Beach improv, isn't it? I believe so. There you go. Nice. And then we got uh, New Year's Eve. I will be at the Stress Factory in New Brunswick, New Jersey. December 30th and January 1st, I will be at the Bridgeport Stress Factory, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Also, dates coming up in January in Boston and Portland and Lexington. Go to FitzDog.com. Get yourself some tickets. Come out and see some live comedy. Let's what do an do? ad read. Should we do an ad read? Um, sure. I mean, look, everybody has, there's, everybody, there's so many ads now for gifts, you know, for whoever. And uh, you got to go shop at 10 different places. You go through gift cards. Just, just keep it simple. Here's an inexpensive, high-quality item that everybody uses 
that you will be thanked for. Yeah. Raycon. No pipeline interruptions. You're going to get this gift, and it's going to be special, and they can use it right out of the box. Raycon wireless earbuds. I'll just say right out of the, Here's the headline. Here's the headline. Same quality as big name brand earphones. And I know, I think you know what company I'm talking about. Don't Half say the name. price. Half the price. The sound is amazing. I mean, the quality is so good. I wear mine. I, I go to bed listening to audiobooks. I take phone calls on them all day. I listen to music uh, on the plane. Just listen to them on the plane. I love it. Uh, more than the competing brand, I can tell you for sure. Uh, I find that it isolates the sound more. Like, I am less distracted by outside noise. It's just right. a fact. Like, in other words, the way they fit in my ear, it's much better for that. Like, I don't I don't hear the outside noise uh, as much, and that's a bonus for me, especially if I'm, like, trying to write or something like that. And they do have thing. They have pure mode. They have balanced mode and bass mode, which is all depending on if you're listening to podcasts, blues, hip hop. It says reggae, but I don't think any of my listeners listen to reggae. So there's no well, th forget you'd be about surprised. the surprised. I'm listening to instrumental when I'm trying to write. Hmm. Yeah. They're in five stylish colors. Pick one for everybody on your list. Free shipping and returns. That's a nice thing to have. The holidays are coming faster than you think. Now is the time to lock, knock out that gift list and avoid the last minute shipping scramble, especially because right now my listeners will get 15% off site-wide uh, with Done. the code HOLIDAY at buyraycon.com slash papers. Go to buyraycon.com slash papers and use code HOLIDAY to get 15% off your entire Raycon order. Buy Raycon, R-A-C-O-N, R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash papers. Also, uh, if you enjoy sports as a way to enjoy it more, as a way to, it's, it's like taking Viagra it, when you already enjoy sex, um, <laughs> you can use uh, this great company called My Bookie that I've been gambling with uh, since they came on as a sponsor last year. I don't think we need to sell people on the thrill of gambling. All right. Well, if I guess what I should sell you on is that you can double your money instantly with uh, My Bookie. So uh, you can't predict when a hunch will pay off, but use our promo code PAPERS at my bookie and i guarantee you'll double your first deposit all the way up to one thousand dollars the best part is my bookie accepts everything from credit card to well-known cryptocurrencies like bitcoin litecoin ethereum so you can bet and withdraw with crypto if you would like this saturday the ufc is closing out 2021 with a bang two world title fights going down uh, at UFC 269, headlined by the lightweight championship fight between Charles Oliveira and Dustin Poirier. This fight amounts to a coin flip, but don't flip a coin. Bet money on this site. But both men have finish rates of over 75%. So, uh, you know, this isn't going to this is going to be exciting. Don't miss out. Double your first deposit up to $1,000 by using promo code PAPERS. Head to my bookie today. Place your bets and watch the sparks fly with UFC 269. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. Wow. Well, I'm in. Goddamn Tampa Bay. Anyway. Oh, yeah. You got beat. We'll get to that. We'll get to uh, that. Let's get to our first section. It's called No Shit. Oh, hold on. These are from, by the way, this package is in my closet here from, talk about supply supply chains, from last year. Matching pajamas for the whole family. Why are they still, you just never wore them? They came late last year. Oh, so you're going to give them out this year? Yeah. You, oh, you caught on to that? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. You're assuming your daughters don't go through your closet, which they do. I don't give a shit if they saw it. That's what they're getting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because what they'll complain about is, no, I want this, something else they already know about because they're telling me about it. Yeah. And by the way, I'm done. I drew a line in the sand. I am done buying hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of sneakers. Uh, th they get into these Air Jordans. I'm done. What do you think you guys are, guys? 
They're into I'm Air done. Jordans? I didn't know that. I bought one from this site, over 200 bucks, uh, well over, and didn't fit. And then they go to try to sell it immediately, haven't worn it, sold it for $100 less. Yeah. That was fun. And who got the $100? What do you mean? The $100 disappeared. Right. Oh, when it came in, no, it was to buy, to replace them. Yeah. And then I'm like, I'm out. I'm not getting you the same type. I mean, good luck. Here, I gave you sneakers. This is what you wanted. You ordered them blindly. You put me on a site that has no returns. It doesn't even exist, the store. It's just online. Whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm livid about it. Okay. What's the, what, where are we? No shit? Uh, here's the no shit story of the week. Uh, COVID's still here. I wouldn't even call it a comeback. It's not gone. It never went away, and uh, now comes the new a now comes the new strain. Did you hear uh, the theory on how they think the new strain uh, came up? How the how the uh, what you call it the variation occurred? Did, did Andy Dick go to a rave? <laughs> Super close. Uh, they think the first person was someone in Southern Africa with HIV. Um, not. <laughs> Not a great day for that guy. No. It's like, listen, I got we have some bad news. But worse than the uh the HIV I'm living with, yeah, like actually a lot worse. Yeah. <laughs> you the whole world's gonna hate you. In your compromised body, uh somehow there's been this mutation that is uh really, really good at spreading. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like twice as fast as remember the fast one, Delta? This is twice as fast. Yeah. And um, now yeah, and now people are upset. That is coming out of Africa. It's like, well, maybe we should have sent them, I don't know, a dozen vaccines? <laughs> a couple? Um, so people have asked, why is it called Omicron? Uh, so when the World Health Organization began name, uh, naming the emerging variants, they uh, turned to the Greek alphabet. And they, uh, they had alpha, beta, gamma. We remember delta. Uh, so that's what they went. Do you think at some point the Greeks are like, uh... How about the Chinese fucking alphabet? <laughs> why Why is our name, why is our alphabet all over this thing? Right. Why do you guys only use our alphabet for diseases and collections of men who date rape women in houses? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could have A house and B house, can't yeah. you? All right. All right. Oh my God, 60 Minutes did a thing about this kid who had been hazed and he drank, they made him drink himself to death. And, oh, wow. And they covered up the whole thing. And uh, it's really like, I told my son when he went to college, I go, if you want to join a fraternity, that's absolutely fine. I will not pay for college. <laughs> and then he went there and he met a, met a bunch of guys and they were put, really pressuring him to join a fraternity. And I said, hey, go for it. Check stop coming. And he didn't do it. And he just thanked me the other day because he realized what a bunch sure? of fucking he did. He's like, I'm so glad that you made me not join a fraternity. Must be lonely in his apartment, you know, sticking the olive up his butt and trying to drop it in a Coke bottle all by himself. <laughs> he's got he's got Chinese letters on the front of his house. He has to put the paddle, he has to fix it to the wall and then <laughs> run backwards really fast with his naked ass and ram into it yeah right um so anyway that's the no shit story now we're moving on front page it's the front page front page extra extra we all about it extra what do we got well, uh, apparently there was a UP a FedEx driver who um, threw 450 packages into a ravine <laughs> in uh, in Alabama. So um, I guess their new motto is when it absolutely positively must get thrown in a ditch overnight. In Alabama. Alab First of all, why is Alabama using FedEx. That doesn't seem like a place that needs anything with a rapid speed. <laughs> what, what do, you, do, you, do you need to get your Bible and your bag of grits overnight? Is it that important? That state hasn't even gotten the message of evolution yet. <laughs> how, how, <laughs> right. All of a sudden now they need things instantly? You're right, you're right. 
What do you need? Your your Leonard Skinner t-shirt and your highly flammable cross? That needs to arrive tomorrow morning? <laughs> By the way, you saw Curve? I, I just saw it uh, with the... Uh, dry cleaner? The KKK guy? Yeah. yeah. The dry cleaner? Yeah, yeah, that was great. Yeah. Um, people, Curb's getting mixed reviews this year, but I like it. Oh, my God. You see, Jeff Garland is on that show, The Goldbergs, which I, yeah. believe it or not, is in its ninth season. Wow. Jeff has been on sitcoms for 20 years, 25 years. He has been consistently yeah. on sitcoms. That dude's got some fucking cheese. Yeah, he does. But it looks like he might be getting fired from his uh, from The Goldbergs. Why? Because he's annoying, apparently. That's what the newspaper article said. The keep... newspaper said Garland may be uh, fired because he's annoying? His behavior. They said his behavior on set. And they didn't say anything sexual. But his jokes and that he's always hugging everybody. And I don't know. He sounds like he's just being a fun guy on set. I guarantee... He just doesn't understand that you have to behave differently on the set of Curb where there's literally no rules and the show is about breaking down, you know, social protocols. Right. And a network sitcom that I haven't seen, but I can't imagine it's that interesting where it's all political correctness. I mean, Jeff is he's just he's a stand up comic. He's probably just having fun. I've seen a couple of episodes of Goldbergs. It's actually pretty good. Who else is in it? Um, uh, I think the blonde, the blonde mom, who's I don't know her name, the actress, she's very funny. Wendy McClellan, McClendon no Covey. Wouldn't even know it if you told me. I think uh, somebody can Somebody got canceled off that show too. I think Brian Callen might have been on that show. Oh, you're absolutely right. He was a gym coach or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he had a spinoff. Callan got a spinoff from it, and then he got canceled. What? Oh, that fucking stings. Well, gym coaches was this in the? This takes place like it's you know it's a, it's a period piece, uh, so to speak. It takes uh, place in the eighties or nineties. Okay. I think gym coaches were all inappropriate back then. No. Yeah. Right. Right. He's getting into character. Yeah. Method acting. That'll be a defense soon. Here's a story about a Tucson police officer. He's been fired, Mike, oh. after he shot a man in a wheelchair. <laughs> he shot a man in a wheelchair By at the way, least. This is a local news story for you. Oh, that's right. Right up the road. Jo I got to call my friend Jojo. Uh, <laughs> he shot a man in a wheelchair at least nine times in the back, killing him uh, as officers responded to a report of a theft of a toolbox. By yeah. a man armed with a knife. Remington, a TPD officer for the last four years, violated multiple aspects of the department's use of force policy when he fired his weapon at Richard Lee Richards. Richard Lee Richards? Yeah, dickly dick. Should be shot for having that name. Oh, Richards, who was, was riding in an electric mobility chair, was hit multiple times in the back as he attempted to enter a Lowe's impro home improvement store on the south side ignoring the officer's commands. The incident started at a Walmart around 6 p.m. when Richards stole a toolbox. A Walmart employee reportedly tried to stop Richards and asked for a receipt. And Richards, brandishing a knife, told the worker, here's your receipt. Hmm. All right. There, there is a lot. I mean, I saw this story. You put this in there, but there is a lot to unpack. All right. First of all, there are... The, the cops shot him. He kept telling him not to keep going, and he was entering a Lowe's. I, it seems like there's a lot easier ways to stop a guy in a wheelchair, like maybe stick your billy club in the spokes of his chair. <laughs> I think that solves the whole problem. Yeah. Or just, how about just handcuff one of the wheels? Yeah, right. That's like a boot. That's like the Denver boot on his chair. He's going nowhere. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if things get extreme tip him over is that <laughs> rather than take his life yeah i mean and he doesn't have a gun uh, i mean uh, uh, it's so crazy and also how big of a like how about just get a fucking sandwich and wait for him to come out of Lowe's? how big of a flight risk is this guy like on the horn like uh, yeah the suspect may flee the scene uh very slowly <laughs> yeah. uh unless there's stairs or a curb 
Yeah. <laughs> then we don't have to worry. <laughs> yeah, and unless we can round up something that goes faster than an electric wheelchair, we may be in real jeopardy here. They could have tased them. By the way, all they have to do is tase the chair, and voila, yeah. you have an electric chair. <laughs> <laughs> a bicycle cop could have stopped this guy. A bicycle cop walking his bike yeah. could have stopped this guy. Right, right. So I read this. So Remington, the guy, he fires eight bullets. This is not funny at all, but he fires eight bullets into him, pauses for a second, and fires a ninth bullet. Wow. And then the guy, Richards, falls to the ground, and uh, Remington, the cop, runs up, and when to say forcefully, he's by the way, he's dead at this point, forcefully handcuffs him. Where, where is the wheelchair bound man going from the ground? Like, the dead one. Yeah. Yeah. You're handcuffing him? Yeah. Is he going to do like push ups? <laughs> Take the knife away. Well, I guess you if you handcuff one hand and he tries to flee, he's only going to go in circles. <laughs> Pull his chair away. Take the knife. And I think you can take a breather. Yeah. I, I, I'm pretty sure. I oh, think my God. I got to be wary of any cop who's Remington, whose last name is a gun. That's not a guy you want on the force. Yeah. I, I mean, I think technically cuffing him is just as effective, just as effective as doing nothing. That's right. it. Yeah. You don't have to do anything when your wheelchair guy's on the ground. Well, I just hope that when they try this guy that they can get a jury of the victim's peers because I want to see 11 wheelchairs in a jury box. <laughs> How are they going to get them up there? And where are they all going to park their cars? How are they going to find enough spots? This guy Richards was a bad guy. This isn't a joke. And one of the things, like he, I think there was maybe some attempted murder in his, in his track record. Richards but, is the guy in the wheelchair. In the wheelchair. So one of the things, and this is true, he was most recently arrested in August 2019 in Nogales, where U.S. Border Patrol agents found him transporting illegal immigrants into the U.S. I'm like, no. Swear to God, that is act. That is everything <laughs> word I just read there was in this article. I'm like, wait a minute, how, how is this being done? Yeah. Is he just is he just wheeling across the border like nothing to see here? <laughs> just big blanket on my lap. Not a Mexican family under the blanket. <laughs> what? Wow. You've picked the wrong coyote if you got this guy in the wheelchair to get you and your family into the country. Maybe it's just like maybe the guy was pushing his wheelchair and they figure, well, they're not going to check him. I'm the I'm the passenger here. I just love this guy's got a lot of swagger for for a crippled guy, you know, with the knife. Oh, that's going, not the word. I'm oh, sorry. Right. What's the word? Uh, handy cape. Uh, bu, 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 bu. No, I don't know what it is now. What's the right word? Uh, physically, physically challenged. Maybe it changes a lot. I do know that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Here's Otherly another abled. Maybe that was in for a while. Otherly abled. Otherly abled? Yeah. Hmm. But you're right. Quite a bit of swagger. Uh, Markham Lamb, a prominent Christian broadcaster known for his outspoken opposition to COVID-19 vaccines, has died. How did he die, Mike? He contracted the guess. virus. Mm -hmm. And he was, was 64. It. And when he died... Um, I believe, and I'm not positive about this, but I believe when a Christian broadcaster who who is outspoken against the uh, against COVID nineteen dies from it, I believe Jesus Christ gets a blowjob from Marilyn Monroe in heaven. Is that? It's just a theory. See, I uh, every year on my on my list of to do is read the Bible. Yeah, and so I got to read it. I never, yeah. I didn't know that. Right. So this guy went down, and uh, he's his uh, friends and family say that the devil did it. Uh, the, his son Jonathan said, "There's no doubt in my mind that this is a spiritual attack from the enemy." As much as oh. my parents have gone on here to inform everyone about everything going on in the can, I mean, he he really they really believe in the devil and that the devil did this to him. So it seems like they learned their lesson, and now they accept science. Well, yeah. 
He said he's in heaven now. His guy's last name is Lamb. I don't think he's in heaven. I think he's a roasted lamb. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Certainly not an innocent lamb. No way. All right. Let's go to the Mile High Club. This is a fun story. All right. If you want to join the Mile High Club without being banned from an airline, a charter <laughs> flight company in Vegas will let you have sex 5,000 feet in the air for a price tag of $1,000. The company, Love Cloud, equipped the interior of a twin engine Cessna with red satin sheets, sex position pillows, and a foam mattress. <laughs> Though the pilot is separated by the couple, from the couple by a secured curtain door, the company's website says the pilot wears a noise-canceling headset to give passengers privacy. Hmm. Yeah. You, wait, you've been in a Cessna? Yeah. They're, they're not big, and the pilot's in the same room as you. Right. With noise-canceling headsets. Wonderful. I First of all, I don't know how I feel about that either. On your left... You'll see beautiful downtown Las Vegas. And directly in front of you, with his head craned around, you'll see your pilot. This is your, hello, this is your captain wanking. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like one of you has already begun your descent. Uh, please put the lady in the upright position. Oh, and he is not a looker. Definitely place the mask over his face first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Just that's a reminder her seat can be used as a flotation <laughs> device. Quite a, quite an ample one, I might add. <laughs> yeah, if she's not a looker, you're kind of hoping when you get to the airport, you're going to get upgraded. They're going to give you somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the, I mean, part of the Mile High Club allure is the getting away with it. Right. You need to pay for it. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, it's $1,000. I mean, that's not a lot. It's another 1250 for the woman, but the flight is 1000 and uh, apparently you get warm nuts. <laughs> there it is. There it is. I'll be at CB Live in Phoenix. <laughs> uh, here's another flying story. A oh. passenger traveling to Atlanta oh, yeah. on a Delta flight was reportedly breastfeeding her, wait for it, cat mid-flight. <laughs> In spite of the crew's request, the woman allegedly continued to do so. Ainsley Elizabeth, a flight attendant from that flight mentioned in the video she posted on TikTok, quote, this woman had one of those like hairless cats. Oh, God. Oh, it just got worse. Swaddled up in a blanket so it looked like a baby. Her shirt was up and she was trying to get the cat to latch on and she wouldn't put the cat back in the carrier and the cat was screaming for its life. When asked to stop, the woman defended herself by saying, quote, although I think passengers are enjoying this because, like I said, I'm not terrible to look at. Uh, I mean, maybe the only thing that can make one of those cats easier to look at is if she had this gorgeous boob in the cat's face. But even then, uh, you know what cat she's describing, right? Yeah. They look like Golem, uh, Gollum, whatever his name is, that creature from Lord of the Rings. If he's like, if Gollum like, was in the last throes of AIDS. <laughs> like, not just Gollum. That doesn't do yeah, it. Yeah, right, right. An emaciated skin is like wrinkling off the thing. And now this is trying to latch on. Does Is the cat have teeth still? What do you mean I, to latch on? It can't have teeth. That would be insane. And they all do. Did she uh, defang her crazy looking cat? I think the cat was probably disappointed. The cat was probably like, all right, I see two. Where's the other six? What the fuck's going on here? I'm just getting started. That's true. But this Man. shit, if they put this video out, it would blow up the internet because there's nothing people like more than cats and tits on the internet. <laughs> and here you finally have them together. It would be a huge video. I think you're right. The only thing you could add to it is like maybe there's a Karen on board who's a transvestite who has a meltdown in the background. <laughs> well, I think this woman might have been halfway there. It yeah. Sounded like. Yeah. She's a Karen. Well, you know, maybe her thought was I'll get away with it because I'm going to swaddle this thing like it's a human baby. And when they see what's in this blanket, it will be hands off. They will feel so sorry for me. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, does your baby does your baby have that Benjamin butt? Is your baby 190? Does it have one of those diseases? <laughs> oh my god. It's like the final scene of um what was the Steinbeck uh novel? Um Grapes of Wrath. Grapes of Wrath, the final scene where the woman is her baby dies of malnutrition and so she breastfeeds a starving black man with her white tit. Very scandalous at the time. Except this would be the raisins of wrath because that wrinkly motherfucker. <laughs> Let's do some local news, Mike. I think we can. I got. I still got a plastic bag here. All right, downtown L.A. A suspect was arrested after police uh, say he was captured on video carjacking a woman who was getting tested for COVID-19 at a school in downtown LA. <laughs> like, yeah. Talk about, all right. So here's her phone call home. Uh, Hey honey. Well, here's the good news. I have COVID. <laughs> it's like, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> yeah. I got tested, but I got carjacked. While yeah. getting tested. Right. 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 She's got to call an Uber and the guy's telling her to put a mask on. She's like, trust me, I don't need a mask. I need a fucking uh, car. But it is this. I mean, we, we're not talking about this week, but it, it's we're starting to make national headlines. The brazenness of these follow home robberies. Did you see the woman in Hancock Park? No. All right. Well, there's footage of it. Wealthy woman. I assume wealthy. I mean, she a nice house with a, a closing gate on her driveway. And Hancock Park has very big estates. Anyway, she's walking her baby in a stroller. She, You see, so the video begins with the gates opening. She comes in with her stroller, and the gates take a while to close, assuming a car is coming in. And then uh, these two guys walk up, and they're looking around all suspiciously. And then one guy just walks in, and the other guy keeps a watch out on the street. And he just walks right up to her and takes her bag and robs her at gunpoint. Oh, uh, shit. And she, yeah, she can't do anything about it. But there's tons of these follow home. They're following. Uh, first of all, don't wear any conspicuous like watches or jewelry. You'll get robbed either in the street or they'll follow you home. They follow you home from ATMs. They follow you home from jewelry stores. And now the big thing are these big, uh, flash mob robberies. And, you know, one of the things is everyone's wearing masks. And it's yeah. not suspicious if you do. How do you find out who's got the Bitcoin? Because that's, the that's the best theft. If you, if you find somebody who's got the Bitcoin, you can get their code and just transfer the money out and there's no fucking there's no trace at all it just takes 48 steps i don't even think it's worth it yeah um i know who else would you follow home i guess you could go to casinos and if somebody wins money follow them home uh, no that's old trick that happens a lot yeah that happens a lot. what happens is they wait they wait at the uh you know where you cash out yeah. And they then they keep a very close eye on you. Mm. I know. Huh. But it's happening here as simple as like the wait in the parking lot where you've gone to an ATM and yeah. uh and then just then just patiently follow you home. Right. Uh but there's a lot of crime in LA. I mean a ton of crime in LA right now. Yeah, but it's still a great city. Oh, that's oh, okay. Never mind. No, but Should've I mean, it's, but people make a big deal out of it. But like, you know, you and I have both lived in New York for, you know, a decade. And it's just like, it's crime happens. What's the fucking, so you I deal with know. it. You just I've, be careful. I've started to feel more vulnerable because I don't think there are repercussions. I don't, I mean, of course, I don't want to get into a giant conversation about law enforcement theory and all that stuff, but. I just think with everyone walking around with masks, why wouldn't you come up to me and just ask for my wallet? Yeah. Uh, I I don't see anything stopping any guy or war woman I'm passing on the street. Yeah. It just takes a knife. Yeah, you can I wear think. a hoodie, sunglasses. Yeah. A mask. A fucking hat. Police are overwhelmed. Police don't I mean, even respond. 
It's a great time there's to be a also, cop. There's and also if you that. get caught, you won't do time unless you had a weapon, from what I understand. I know. We're going to get a lot of mail from people about the blue states and how backwards they have law enforcement and all that. I'm saying independent of that, uh, I mean, and don't get me started on a political conversation about the disappearance of the middle class, which began under Reagan, and that now we have. Oh, we're, don't we're start. Like, we do, we're don't like Mexico start. City with rich and poor people. That's right. what we are. Right. But- I am saying aside from all politics and aside from law enforcement, it is a really easy time just to rob people. Yep. And stores. Would you rob a store like, say, Cartier or Gucci or something like that if you knew you could get away with it? Like it's closed. You can get in the back door. You won't get caught. You're not even asking a question. So now are you... So your question seems to be... Am I a type of guy who steals things? Yeah. Because what's the challenge? You just told me I'm guaranteed to not get caught. Guaranteed to get away. Would you do it? I don't. What's the? I don't get it. What's the? No. I mean, I, I know, but but I think most people would. Most people would, right? I think. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I think I might. And then sell it. Nah, I wouldn't. Now that what I planned it, it, once I think it out, the actual like having to get rid of the merch and all that, I would feel too sleazy. Yeah, I couldn't do it. Um, when I was so young, you- I was a stealing motherfucker, though. I used to break into stores, shoplift. Uh, there was this one store that we called Cards and Lift because it was it was <laughs> called Cards and Stuff, and we used to just steal from it. And uh, there was another place that was. Uh, that that we had a uh, there was a back window that we had broken and crawled into and we stole a bunch of uh, candles. I like what do we care? We're teenagers. We stole fucking crates of candles because that's all they had, and uh, beer. Used to steal beer. Do you see online there was footage of uh, there's a restaurant and guys are sitting at a table and then guy hoodie mask sunglasses and another guy they walk in. They walk around. It's a t- it's a very informal. I mean, it's not that different from like a McDonald's or like a uh, you know Chipotle type seating arrangement. And they walk around the table, and there's a by the way a big table full of people, eight like an eight topper right next to them, uh, but but in a different row. So but the next row, these guys then walk and then he walks to the side of the table. And you see him pull out his pistol. He leans in the table and he pulls out his pistol from the hoodie pouch, you know, the uh, the hand pouch. And and the guy knows immediately. And obviously he said to him and the two guys at the table take off, take off their watches and then take out their wallets. The guys take them, put them right and then just slowly walk out. No one in the restaurant saw it. Wow. Yeah. Damn. And then it happens out on the street now, uh, like on Third Street and stuff, where there's lots of like cafes. If they see a nice watch or something, these criminals are taking it. You know, pot shop has got to be a good heist because they're not allowed to take credit cards, so it's a completely cash business. Uh, I wonder if they have safes that they like feed the money into throughout the day, so they don't accumulate a lot of cash. Right, they'll usually put up a sign saying such. Every hour, like, the cash is taken out or something like that. I mean, they always have a bunch of security guards out front, but it's not hard to neutralize a security guard. If you got six people, because you're going to get a lot of money, you can hire six guys. Yeah. Oh, Chris said uh, they have ex-seals moving money for them. So then I hire actual seals. I I get current seals. (laughs) Um... Uh, I told my dad, so there was a famous cr- crime story in L.A. this week. I should know her name, but the Godfather, is his nickname the Godfather? The, we talk, talked about this yesterday at lunch, I think, but the famous record producer, and it's a shame I don't I don't have his name up in front of me. James Iovini? What? Jimmy Iovini? His wife was very, and the two of them were a very, very um, altruistic couple, and they donated tons of money. She... Uh, I don't know if it was a follow home robbery, but they broke into her house in Beverly Hills. Yeah, of Avant or Avant, A V A N T. And I don't know what happened in the robbery, but the guy shot and killed her. And they also, they're a very wealthy couple. They had security on the premises, and shots were fired at that guy. And that guy later 
was arrested, the guy who did it, in another robbery in another canyon like six miles away because he accidentally had an assault rifle. He accidentally shot himself in the foot. Huh. But, but, um, uh, what was my point about this? Anyway, it's very, very disturbing. Um, and why would he have to kill her? That's the, she's in her eighties. Damn. Like that. That's a, that's a crazy word to me. But oh, I was telling my dad it. I didn't even get a third of the way through the story, and he's like, "Oh, it sounds like the security guard was in on it." In other words, uh, shot right. at the security guard. He didn't die, but the woman died. Right. Right. And the yeah. guy got away. Yeah. <laughs> Why not just choose a house that doesn't have a security guard? You know, I mean, it's not like there's not a million other rich houses in L.A. Yeah. Huh. Clarence and Josephine Avant or Avant. What's his nickname, Chris? Chris is writing in our Google Doc here so we can see it. He's a very, very famous music producer, produced huge acts. I don't know if he's the A&R guy, and there's a documentary about him. All right, well, speaking the documentary is amazing. Speaking um, of music, let's get to the entertainment section, The Black Godfather. The Black, I see, I didn't want to say it, but Chris loves saying that. The Black Godfather. All right. There you go. All right, so listen, entertainment. Oh, new section. Okay. We're not talking about Von Dutch. I haven't seen it yet. We're going to talk about uh, the Beatles documentary. It's called Get Back. And sure is. I watched the second part last night. I shouldn't even say I finished it. It was at two hours and 15 minutes in, I was emotionally exhausted. It is trying to watch it. And yet Aaron started talking at one point. And I was like, shh. Like of you are course. so intensely connected to watching. It's so intimate. It's so vulnerable that I, I find it. I, f- I think they should have made a six or seven part series instead of three, because you're not meant to ingest two hours and 45 minutes of that thing at once. It's dense. I, you know, there's going to be repeated viewings, but I was really, really blown. I mean, there's put it this way. Let's just back away from it for a minute. It is such a study on the creative process the only thing I've seen close to this, and I'm sure there's plenty of documentaries, especially with tortured writers, but was, did you ever see the South Park documentary? It's called like... Yeah, I did see that. 36 Hours or something right. like that. Mm-hmm. It's so stressful, but you see their process. Well, this process is unbelievable. And, and that, you know, you always read about how to be creative and how to stick with something, even an elusive idea. And to be playful is one of the huge pieces of advice. Like, don't run, then don't turn away from it. Then just, you know what, don't try as hard. Play around with it literally. And that's what they do. They sing it with different accents. They sing it with different tempos, beats, styles. And when they have this germ of an idea, they just keep playing with it. And it's amazing to see. It's amazing, and it's and you completely understand. Well, first of all, I mean Yoko. There's Yoko. She's the elephant in the living room, and uh, <laughs> she is just so clearly a thorn in in Paul's side. I don't know the 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 other musicians don't really talk about it, but I mean you can just look at it. You go, there's four geniuses sitting in a room making music, and there's someone reading a newspaper who's like just acting weird and you don't need that there, but that's not what broke up the Beatles. It seems like George was just like, he was the one guy creatively who was having the most problems. You know, God, you can talk about it forever and we will not do that, but that's part one. I mean, really what broke up, I mean, he was on Howard Stern, Paul McCartney recently, and he said, I, I mean, no, I'll tell you what, I mean, John broke up the Beatles. Yeah. And that happened. So these guys are in the studio. There is, no, it is impossible to uh, underscore enough how prolific these fucking guys were. I mean, they, it was a six year window that they did all of this. St- going into the studio, This studio session was three weeks for Let It Be. And in there, they started writing a lot of Abbey Road, which is what they'd go in the studio for next. But 
before this was Sergeant Pepper, never mind Revolver, Sergeant Pepper's uh, Magical Mystery Tour White Album. White Album had just come out when they go in the studio to do this. By the way, White Album, double album. Well, one wasn't that good. I love the White Album because I think it's like an artist's notebook. Like there's yeah. like sketches in there. Some of them are very obviously incomplete. Yeah. But they did a lot of the White Album separately and it sounds like it. Yeah. Um, well, but, it, no, come, it, it, but to, to watch it, it really does. And I don't know if maybe it's because Paul's the one that's alive. And I don't know if he like had a hand in editing it. But it certainly comes off as if Paul is doing 90% of the writing. Uh, you know, my buddy Chris, as I, and we've talked about this before, he always said that he's like, no, no, you have to understand how much of this is Paul and he's read everything. And he goes, mm. yeah, I mean, really deep dive. He read two books written by engineers of the Beatles and the engineers are like, it's all Paul. I yeah. mean, all, all is an overstatement, but in terms of the drive, the only reason they're in the studio to begin with on that day. And then Paul comes in and there's this amazing scene in this documentary where George and Ringo look like they could not be more hungover. They're sitting there staring at Paul. John's not even in yet. And Paul just wills get back the song. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he just starts strumming, nah, 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 nah. and then all of a sudden, and then it's so much, it's amazing to watch the documentary, and you see Paul, like, he clearly, in his head, he has the rhythm down, so he knows how many syllables he has to fill, and he's like, Jojo Martin came from, you know, from Arizona, and you know, it's like Jojo Martin, Jojo Living, Jojo Smith came from Arizona, and it's like, and you're just watching it, you're like, no, yeah. you don't need the word there, you're going to yeah, put yeah. it before Arizona, right, and right. then he starts to do that, and then the, the, I don't know if you're there yet, it might have been at the end of two, but did you see when all of a sudden, it's like, all of a sudden it falls out of his head, uh, Jojo left his home in Tucson, and, and all of a sudden he stops, and he has to be, is Tucson in Arizona? <laughs> 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 yeah and it was you know it was very intense and i feel like you need to take a few days off it's one of those things like like great shows on hbo the sopranos or breaking bad or whatever we know breaking bad wasn't hbo was it um no it was amc but it was got AMC. famous on netflix right um those kinds of shows you all really need a week off and then you need to watch the next one because i was yeah, I was really emotional and incredibly inspired the next day, but I was pretty emotional. Like, of all places, I think I texted you. I went to the DMV. So there's a moment, I don't know if you've gotten there yet, they're trying to figure out a song. And John Lennon is three feet across from Paul McCartney, and they're trying to get this thing. And they did a, ah, uh, uh, like at the end of the song, they're harmonizing, and they do this, first of all, when those two voices lock, it's like a drug. Yeah. Like, it's a, like, so, like, it's like a moment in Mozart where you're like, uh, I think that's divine. Yeah. Like, I think that just came through these people and is bigger than them. And when their two voices, you know, and I know I'm raised on it, but I mean, listen, I was not alive for for the Beatles, basically. I, I wasn't. I, I literally was not even born when Sgt. Pepper came out. You were, Greg, because you're old as fuck. Hey, now. So any, anyway, but yes, I li I was alive and aware in the 70s when, you know, the Beatles were basically the soundtrack for their, for English-speaking countries and even beyond. But uh, so they look at each other and they find this harmony and it it's this thing. And John... His eyes light up and he gives this like loving, wow, look to Paul. And it just leveled me. Yeah. And then yeah. the next day I'm in my car driving to the DMV. Like it couldn't have been further away from anything like nice even. And I put on the song Two of Us and I fell apart. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just so incredible. And any uh, one thing that I then looked, I'm like, anyway, um, this one thought to keep in mind, the jaw dropping thing. I texted this, the jaw dropping thing to remember when you watch this is during all of this, they're in their twenties. George is 25. 
three weeks after their rooftop concert, which is the culmination of, of this Get Back documentary and the culmination of the, of the Let It Be sessions, three weeks after the rooftop concert, they went back in the studio and made Abbey Road. And during that, George recorded the song Something on his 26th birthday. And then they all went their separate ways. Did it? Uh, who calls and Sinatra, by the way, and Sinatra calls something the greatest love song ever written. Wow. Yeah. 26th birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mine is still coming. I mean, my creative peak is still coming. Those guys, they rushed and look what happened. I thought you meant your 26th birthday is still coming. Oh. I was really worried about but the, you. The other thing that really comes through is how verbal John Lennon is, how incredibly dexterous he is with with words and uh, just... Does he say dexterous? Dexterous. Is that oh, not okay. a word? I don't know. It's not a word uh, Mr. Lennon would use, I don't think. But anyway, or me, or he, most people, I don't think. But all right. Now I'm afraid to talk because of your heavy judgmentalism. He was full of joy, and you're right. He was very fast and witty. He was fast and witty, and he he conjured he he was able to pull names out of thin air. He was very he was very smart. He was a very fucking smart and extremely confident in who he was. You know how some people just know who they are and they know their yeah. voice and they know what they mean and. The, it, it, it made him put people at ease. Some people are smart and it makes you ill at ease because you feel intimidated. But I right. feel like he was smart and it made people comfortable because he wasn't trying to show it. Right. He was just having fun and being silly. How about that one scene? It's like, you know, they're like the sage, wise old men, right? John and Paul sitting there, right? The leaders yeah. clearly of this, even though I think Ringo's the oldest. Anyway, uh, keep in mind they're 29. And uh, they're talking, Paul the night before had watched all their footage when they went to India and studied, was it with the Maharishi? Um, and anyway, they studied and it was this deep dive of spiritual searching and, um, and they meditated and everything. And he was watching a lot of the footage and he and John were talking about, you know, in, in watching it, you know, we were all like, oh, you sit now. You could see us like sit down and now we're being instructed to now you say it this way and here's your mantra. And, and he's like, and I, you know, I just wish in looking back at that trip, you know, like I wish we were more and John finishes his line. He's like, uh, you know, more ourselves. And Paul's like, yeah. And George is like tuning his guitar like five feet away. He's like, well, that's a joke. I mean. It's actually the complete opposite. The reason you're going there is to lose yourself, is to is to find the real you. It, it's it's the opposite of being yourself. And he's 25, yeah. and he already knows that. Yeah, yeah. And it's so true. And they say nothing. I mean, I don't know how it was edited, but it looked like they were like, "Yeah, why don't you shut up?" Or they is were... this another one of your songs that we're going to reject? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and then John Lennon started singing a song that ended up on the Imagine album that they didn't even use because they probably didn't think it was good enough. Oh, you I don't think you've gotten there yet. Keep listen, Peter Jackson knows what he's doing. There are tons of little nuggets that are in there that are for the really, real, real, real Beatles fans who have their ears perked up and are waiting for notes, sequences of notes, and then they're going to geek. You think baseball has geeks? This Beatles culture, they are going to, like, I'd like to actually read some of the reviews of this and, I guess, message boards of Beatles fans. Because at one point, did you see, they're waiting. They were doing a lot of waiting for the setup of speakers and everything, and then they moved studios. Anyway, at one point, did you... I don't know if you've seen it yet. I've only seen two episodes, so I'm not that far ahead of you. John goes, he's fiddling around, and he's like, imagine that you love me, uh, ba ba ba. He's like, it's easy. And you're like, holy shit. It's easy. No. Imagine there's no, it's easy uh, if you try. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what he had at that point was, imagine you love me. Oh, uh, right, right. It's easy if you, tr like, and, yeah. and he kind of, he goes, if you, and he kind of fades on it. Yeah. Uh, Oh, no, there's a lot of that. There's right. a lot of that. All You're right, hearing... more about the Beatles next week. We, we don't want to, we don't want to go on too long about it, but this you guys should catch up and watch it. 
it would be hard for a non-Beatles fan, I think, to make it through all of it. But if you approach it from a, here's this genius period, and and th- there's nothing. The song sound so when Paul sits down and all of a sudden let it be like falls out of his mouth, but he doesn't have all the words. It just sounds so inevitable. It just sounds like like oh yeah, there it is. Like we've all unconsciously heard that it's yeah. in the air but this guy just spit it out right and made real sounds with it uh, that we've all been hearing in our heads but it's like you're just watching that process if you just are like regardless of your thoughts on the beatles like this thing that that changed music uh you're watching how it how it came to be you and know what i what, saw, what i saw came to be last week was on general hospital <laughs> The star, <laughs> Stephen Burton, confirmed the rumors that he was fired from the ABC soap opera because he would not get vaccinated. Quote, I wanted you to hear it from me personally before launching into anti-vaccine rhetoric. Unfortunately, General Hospital has let me go because of the vaccine mandate, um, which, you know, hurts. But this is also about personal freedom to me. Maybe one of these days... If these mandates are lifted, I can return and finish my career as Jason Morgan. Um, That's going to be kind of tough because these soap opera writers, they're Hollywood liberals. And they are going to write his death as the most torturous, slow, offensive passing (laughs) of a soap star in history. It's going to be like, you know, I love Jason. I loved him so much and I wanted his baby. But when I found out he was a child molester and he ate his own sister... I just, I just feel like I don't know him anymore. And I, I went to talk to him about it, finally confront him, and why is there a belt around his neck and he's <laughs> masturbating on the back of a doorknob? What, what is he, he doing? Just, he just, the Hitler mustache makes me just see him in a different way now. And I'm glad he's dead. I'm glad. He can't hear a thing I say. He's laughing so hard over family circus. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, this is the wrong time. I mean, L.A. needs fake doctors. We are in a medical That's crisis. Right. That's right. L.A. has the most fake doctors on planet Earth, and we need them. We can't be laying one of them off. Yeah, just because his only training was the uh, Herbert Bergdorf acting school, we need you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somehow he puts an MD there. I don't know what uh, the Herbert Bergdorf acting school, what yeah. the degrees are. <laughs> it's a little confusing. Um, you want to do this Florida man? Yeah, I do. I want to do Florida man. Uh, this is a dark story. I'll say that up front. Uh, there's a murder. Oh, but, boy. Uh, here it is. A man is accused of beating his father to death during a fight over a television. Okay. According to the arrest report, Maria, Mario, (laughs) let me start again. According to the arrest report, Mario Trebio Justininiano called 911 and said he had been involved in a fight with his father where he hit him in the face. Mario stated he did not know whether his father also, his father is also named Mario, was alive or dead. That's what he said on the call. According to the report, Mario, who I'm going to call Alive Mario, said he brought his father to his home where he was going to help him with the television. Alive Mario said he told his father he wanted to buy a new set, but soon-to-be-dead Mario wanted to give him a new one, starting an argument between the pair. The report says Alive Mario told authorities his father cursed at him and then tried to walk past him, but he didn't move, so his father hit him in the face once. Alive Mario then told deputies he punched soon-to-be-dead Mario three to four times and put the older man in a chokehold and threw him to the ground. Damn. Authorities say the injuries of now-dead Mario uh, were severe and gruesome and not consistent with being punched three to four times in self-defense. This is over... What's this story makes no sense. They got in a fight because both of them wanted to give the other one a new TV. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I wonder if, I wonder if the son will be let out of jail to give the eulogy and he can just go, what can I say about my father? We both 
Really love TV. And the name Mario. And the name Mario. <laughs> <laughs> but what? Like, uh, there's more going on. And apparently the guy was like pulverized. So this son snapped. I want to be racist about this. I want to know what Mario Tarabio Justiano, is that Portuguese or is that Italian? You have to put Cuban as a guess in the mix. Cuban? I, I, I don't know. I mean, this is in, was it, it's Miami? Oh, it could be Cuban. Well, it's yeah. Orange County, Orange yeah. County, Florida. Okay. I don't know where that is. That's not Miami, but I don't know where Orange County is. Isn't the whole state Orange County? Yeah. My my father once hit me because he thought I was making a joke about him behind his back with my friend, but I was actually just telling my friend that we should play a joke on my father. Anyway, let's do international. That's worth wait, wait, wait. Your dad was right then. That's worth hitting you over. No. Did he hit did he hit you in front of the friend? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh no. Uh, let's do international. I guess we can try to move on from that story. <laughs> Hold on. I hope this isn't about a dad. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, this isn't me, is it? Yeah, this is you. Oh, okay. Here we go. It's called Live Ammo. I, did I put this in here? No, no. I th oh, did I miss one? No, we're at International. The Ecuador story. You missed the Ecuador story. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this story. Ecuador. Pals yank dead friend out of his coffin to take him on one last motorcycle ride. <laughs> you almost don't need the story. That's one that almost lives as a headline. Eric's pals claim to have received permission from his parents <laughs> for his funeral in Ecuador to remove him from his coffin to carry out the strange act. Reports say around seven men are shown surrounding a motorcycle as a lifeless body is hoisted up <laughs> onto the passenger seat. The men have record, are recorded cheering and waving their arms with excitement as the body flops onto the driver's back. <laughs> That's great. Then, then the men road trip to Sturgis where the man died again <laughs> of both COVID and a crash involving an 80 year old man on a Harley. Who also had a dead guy on the back of his bike. Yes. Well, the guy definitely didn't need a helmet for this ride. Uh, <laughs> hey, Eric, you're riding bitch. Uh, and I don't want to hear anything about it. <laughs> yeah. All right. You're, you're, you're fucking, you're hugging me from behind. If you can, I'll hold on to your hands. This is, this is like you, don't you have a, a blow up doll you keep in your car so you can get in the uh, carpool lane? No, it's not a blow up doll. What it's is a it? mannequin. It's a top of a mannequin. It used to be here in this closet, but it's down in a storage thing I'm renting. Where did you get a half a mannequin? Uh, when I was at CB, uh, filming the show at CBS Studios, I casually asked, I go, listen, I'm going to, I can get one. I can get, I just need a mannequin top because I can get in the, uh, you know, the carpool lane on the way to work because it's such an ass tear getting there from here on the west side. So uh, what I don't realize, you know, I'm being really nice and saying, listen, only if it's easy because I see a ton of mannequins down on our set for lighting purposes, uh, like they put them in chairs and they put all the, and like, so I, I do see them around. Anyway, what I forgot was I'm the creator of the show and the EP. So the guy, he's not going to not produce a mannequin when I casually bring it up. Right. So they got me this mannequin and uh, it was the top half, but they got a shirt, sunglasses. Oh, the wig is still here. Here it is. This is the wig from the mannequin. Wow. They put a wig on it, but I've told you the story, so I, I used it all the time, right? And um, I just love that once your show is canceled, I can see them going like, uh, hey, EP, we need the mannequin back. And yeah. you give it to them, and it's just the face is covered in cum, the <laughs> back, just all dried up and flaked. And I'm like, what do you want me to do? You didn't give me the bottom <laughs> half. And uh, <laughs> so... It's next to me, right? And we're driving and I'm in the I'm on the 405 and I'm in the carpool lane and first time I ever saw it, 
cop on a motorcycle had pulled someone out of the lane and is in the breakdown part to the left of the uh, carpool lane. And the cop is there walking towards where I'm coming from. And I'm like, fuck, because this thing is as fake as can be sitting next to me, even though it has, I, I, I took the wig off, but I put a baseball hat on it. And, uh, and at night, it's fine because all you see is a perfect silhouette. Yeah. And I would come home in the dark every single night. Anyway, so what I did was I'm like, holy shit, holy shit. So I pick up my coffee from uh, you know the center console, and I, and I pretend I'm having an argument with the ah. mannequin. And, I, and, and I've and i raised the coffee, and I'm moving it a little almost like a magician's trick. Like, look here, look here. And I'm like gesturing with the coffee like, you know, kind of like as if I was saying, like, how can you say that? All, this? all right. Here's the fucked up part. I realized as I drove by the cop who had worked. The cop, I think, looked in and I didn't get pulled over. But I was actually yelling at the mannequin as I drove by. I was like, well, how can you say that? We fucking take this ride every day and you bring up this bullshit. And I'm literally yelling at this fucking mannequin. And I'm like, you know what? I lost. It's worse than a ticket. It's worse than yeah, and a you ticket. did it for like 15 minutes, and that's when you realized I may have detached. You should have seen the ride home. First of all, I get to work. I'm like, you stay in this fucking car and think about what you said. And again, you still came in its face that night. Like you got over it eventually. <laughs> well, we had the ride home to work things out. He can't give me a handy because they chopped off his arms. <laughs> It's just sleeves dangling there, kind of like this, kind of like this guy in Ecuador. Just these sleeves lifelessly dangling. Uh, this oh. happened in uh, Gloucester, England. A bomb disposal experts were called in to a hospital uh, after a man told doctors there was a World War II anti-tank shell lodged inside of him. Inside of him? Well, the explosive ordnance disposal team arrived at the hospital after hearing that a patient has had presented with a munition in his rectum. <laughs> the item had already been removed by doctors by the time the bomb squad arrived, the spokesman added, and the EOD confirmed that the shell was, quote, not live and therefore not a danger to the public. The unnamed patient, which pisses me yeah. off, you get fucking named for that. <laughs> The unnamed patient told doctors at Gloucester Royal Hospital that he, quote, slipped and fell on the two inch wide artillery shell. I mean, is there a follow up question? Just the word how? How um, do you do you walk naked in your grandfather's old World War Two? Is where he keeps his uniform and his shell. You, you walk naked in there and you was I it slipped. on the ground, st just standing upright? When I was in eighth grade, I slipped and fell on a number two pencil while I was jerking off. I, I'll, I'll just let that be known right now. You mean a packet of number two pencils <laughs> still in the pencil bag? And I just wish I could erase the memory. Uh, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> I swear I fell on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god but at least he's, he's kind of he must be a hipster he went retro you know not a new bullet he yeah. got a world war ii bullet and stuck it up his ass another question from the doctor uh why the second we told you that it was not live ammo did your erection just fall apart <laughs> <laughs> nothing else was happening at the time yeah. we just told you that good news by the way right and, and why, the why are you disappeared? Why are you dressed up as a Luftwaffe plane? Is this a whole sketch? <laughs> oh man! Uh, in Italy, an Italian man—he is Italian—is facing charges of fraud after turning up for his COVID-19 vaccine wearing a fake arm. He was determined to dodge the jab, so he paid hundreds of euros for a silicone prosthetic. Uh, after signing a consent form, he sat down, lifted his sleeve, and the uh, doctor immediately noticed something was wrong, touched the arm, asked him to take his shirt off. The plant foiled. The man, who has not been named, then tried to persuade the health worker to turn a blind eye. 
I well, tried to do the exact same thing during my tr- prostate exam. <laughs> Big fake ass. <laughs> yeah. Didn't work. No, but I'm, I wonder if this was the same as like, imagine Melania Trump getting a breast exam and the doctor being like, this is not real. <laughs> this is a prosthetic. The problem when you brought the fake ass is you were inside it. <laughs> yes. So he couldn't even <laughs> examine the fake ass. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, most people knew immediately the arm was fake because when the man spoke, the arm didn't move. Ah, there it is. He's Italian. That's some out of for you, huh? <laughs> All right, let's By do the some. Way, sp- can you imagine? It is a funny image. Can you imagine Italians not not at all using their arm? No gesticulation, no no hands flying about as they speak. You'd be like, something's wrong. Like they not, they not look, they touching look like you zombies. on the face while they're talking or rubbing their hand in your hair. Yeah. Where if you showed like you know, old British guys. I started to watch James Bond this week. Uh, I, I have a lot of questions, but like imagine seeing those old James Bond types, like his bosses and all that cue and stuff. Uh, and, and them talking with their arms moving. It's just as far in a concept. You know what I mean? I was in Italy once and I'm not making this up. A guy was walking down the street and he was holding a briefcase and he had a phone in his hand. And while he was walking, he stopped put his briefcase down so that he could pinch his fingers together and go like this up and down with his free hand. (laughs) It's perfect. (sighs) Um, It says here, wait, Chris Denman wrote a joke. It says Sebastian would still be a waiter. I guess Sebastian Maniscalco. Yes. Okay. Uh, There you go, Chris. If he couldn't move his arms... I yeah. guess that's the, that's it, right? I guess, but if he couldn't move his arms, how would he carry the trays? No, it's just it's just talking through your arms. Mm. All right, we got to move this along. Let's do man. some sports. So you are You're down, down, you down, of- down to seventy dollars. You were up. You were up over two hundred dollars not too long ago. Did they score like on the last drive or some shit? Um, I don't know, but they won thirty eight thirty one and the point spread was only three. Uh, so Tampa Bay is uh beating the spread lately. All right. I have to look more into I wanted to do these news stories about how of course uh Tom Brady's team is cheating again. Um, you know, his receiver suspended for three games, I guess. But, you know, they had said the whole team was vaccinated. It turns out they're not. I don't have all the facts. So I want to look into this, but boy, is COVID back in the NFL. I guess the Cowboys were missing nine players Thursday night. They still won. Damn. I, I, Are you serious? Do, that was the headline I grabbed and I put in here. Wow. Again, I want to check. I want to check these facts. But I want and I want to see, but uh, yeah, it's it's a threat again for sure. Well, speaking of scientific things, oh, a surge. Oh, you want to give me a crinkle? We're going to the science yeah, section. No, we need that, otherwise it can't happen. There we go. A surgeon who said it was a human error after amputating the wrong leg of an 82-year-old patient in May was found guilty of gross negligence by an Austrian court and fined the equivalent of $3,000. What? (laughs) I guess in Austria, the legs are not that big a deal. You'd think with those mountains, they like climbing. They would really, you know, put put more value in legs. Yeah. Uh, So a disastrous combination of circumstances led to the patient's right leg being amputated instead of his left, said Freistadt, the Freistadt Clinic told told CNN. The man died before the case went to the judge, but not before the other leg was amputated. So they cut off the wrong leg, realized it, cut off the right leg, then the guy fucking died. And now the widow is suing for damages. So, um, So I guess... They can use the money. Well, they got that money, plus they save money on the coffin. They only need a, a, a much smaller coffin this way. You got a new fake ass you can bring into your prostate exam. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, 
maybe this guy is maybe the widow made money on parts and gave gave a, an arm to the Italian guy. Uh, this is uh, so uh, so I blew out my Achilles, right? So I go in there and it's like last checks. I'm in pre-op, right? And I can't even tell you how many people came by. And so one comes by and they're like, she has a clipboard and she's like, it's your left Achilles, correct? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, point to your left Achilles. And I pointed to it and she's like, so that's the one. Where, and then she checks it off and all. Next nurse comes by. So it's your left Achilles we're doing, right? Uh, correct. She did not say right. Left Achilles we're doing, correct? I'm like, correct. And she rolls up my pant leg and she's like, this one right here? And she and I'm like I'm like yes I can move it and she wrote yes on my ankle and then she rolled up my pant leg on my right ankle the good one and wrote no in sharpie wow that's great yep yeah that's how you do it I mean <laughs> can you imagine you come out of surgery because we've all had buyer's remorse or or like gotten <laughs> home and like the, the the product is damaged when you take it out of the box and it's so frustrating you literally get so fucking angry that you drove all the way to the mall but imagine <laughs> your wrong leg is gone where do you begin yeah they ruined my only good Achilles <laughs> my, at that moment <laughs> right now I have two Achilles that are shot. Yeah, right. I have to go to PT. Well, actually, I, yeah, I have two that are shot, right, I, and one that's not even fixed. Ugh. Oh, my God. I would have, yeah, I would have freaked out. If you would uh, have to lose your left arm or your right leg, which would you give up? Oh, I mean, my left arm, obviously. Really? Yeah. Why? It doesn't matter which arm. Sure over it does. A leg? I think so. Have I thought about that too much? I know. I think so. If you lose your right leg, you can't drive because you can't hit the accelerator. What do you mean? If you lose a leg, it's been proven by that track star. You can still easily kill a woman. <laughs> <laughs> As long as she takes too long Pistorius, in the bathroom. Whatever his name is. Yeah. Stand your toilet. You're not going to do that if you lose an arm. It's a little harder to kill a gal. Yeah. All right. Um, what are we doing? All right. Let's get down to let's some move it on. Yeah. letters to the editor. Oh, okay. Oh, we jump way down. I like it. Wait, I just want to... I just want to do this one story real quick. In our uh, obituaries. And that's all, folks. All right. Phil Saviano was a survivor of childhood clergy abuse uh, whose work to help other survivors and uncover preparatory beha predatory behavior in the church was featured in the Oscar-winning 2015 film Spotlight, He Just Died, which, okay. is, which raises the question... Is he still a survivor of childhood clergy abuse? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's funny. That's it. Let's get to the funnies. That's good. No, that's a good one. <laughs> oh, by the way, this is very unrelated, but I'm going to bring it up because I thought it was really funny. Uh, he parsed it. Uh, Mark Norman. Norman? Is yeah. That Mark Norman? Uh, very funny stand-up. He's on my podcast this week. He's he. I like him a lot. I've never met him, but yeah, I like great. him a lot. It's great. So- he posted a clip where he was doing a uh, crowd work and um, someone goes, she's blind. He's like, she's blind. Wow. And it's like, uh, and they go legally blind. And he, that's kind of funny. So he kind of goes in that area. He's like, all right, so how blind are we talking? And it's like, uh, like, do you have the dog? And, um, and I think they yelled back, like they do have the dog. And he, it's kind of like, what? it's kind of like watching the Beatles create, at one point he goes, um, but you can see, like, can you see the dog? And then all of a sudden he's like, hey, wait. He, all of a sudden he goes, hey, wait a minute. Who picks up seeing eye dog shit? <laughs> it was one of those, like, that's been in the air. Yeah. That is the, the yeah. when you say there's no more low hanging fruit, yeah. that is a fucking low hanging, beautiful piece of fruit. Yeah, that's good. That's How good. have I? And he even goes, wow, wait a minute. That is true. He's like, I've got to write that down. But like, <laughs> I've never thought about that. <laughs> Who picks up the scene? Yeah, dogs? that's hilarious. Shits. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, all right. Speaking of funny, let's do some funnies. All right. Here's the. All right. There it is. <laughs> also, anytime you walk your dog, just have a kid. Just have a white cane. Yeah. You never have to pick up your shit again. <laughs> Like, you know, you didn't pick up your dog's shit. He's like, I, I didn't feel it shit. Did it shit? Um, all right, Hagger the Horrible. Hagger climbs up a mountain to uh, the top, and there's a woman who's sitting. She appears to be a yogi, and she is she sitting does. cross-legged with her fingers together, and he says, who are you? And she says, I'm the wise woman. Are you reluctant to take advice from a wise woman? And he says, I take advice from a woman every day at home. And then she goes, that makes you a wise man. And then it doesn't say this on the next frame, but he says, you would be wise not to sit alone on a mountain <laughs> in the 11th century or you'll get raped. <laughs> yes. Uh, meditate on this. I am about to violate you. <laughs> Uh, Lockhorns this week. Uh, they're walking out of their attorney. I don't know why they're at an attorney, but they, oh, they're at the attorney. And she says, see, he said nagging is protected speech. <laughs> <laughs> they're good. They're good. Um, and then there's another one where he's at the garage and it's one of those windows you can see into the garage and there's three yeah. mechanics and they're hysterically laughing and his car is up on the jacks and he's on the phone and he goes, I don't know what they found, but doesn't look good. <laughs> uh, here's the family circus. Let's, let's uh, tap the brakes. Uh, yeah, no doubt. By the way, I thought this was funny. I think I, uh, I don't know if I showed it to you yesterday. It's kind of like the funnies. This is a meme going around. I think I might have showed you yesterday. It's a headstone, and it, the headstone of uh, you know this dead thing is it just says, <clears throat> "White couples in TV commercials, 1950 to 2021." That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that is really funny. The guy who posted it's white people humor. He's uh, down in Florida. Poor Bye. Dennis Gubbins. That's his. That's I know. His line I, know. Of I work. did show it to them. I did show it to him. Boy, Family Circus. Uh, I, I'm not even going to fake outrage. I'm not going to do anything. This one is one of the low points, even for Family Circus. So the little shitty redheaded kids in bed. It's the dark room, and he's under the covers. Jeffy. But he he's sat up. And the mom and the dog are leaning in because this little kid's, yeah, you know, talking to them. And the kid goes, Mommy, when I rub my feet on this blanket, there are sparks under here. That's it. That's all. Not, it's, I don't, I don't even know where to begin because... I, that would be the premise, and you do something with that, right? Like in other words, it's like when it's like when Paul is fucking around and playing Get Back, but he doesn't have the words yet, and he's just sort of like placeholder. It's a placeholder. Or or he's just holding a guitar, and he's like, "Do you know this this guitar makes sound?" Yeah. Do you guys know this yeah. guitar makes sound? Yeah. It's even that level because. All right. Sometimes I miss things on these and I'm and I'm not being I'm being genuine. Is sparks the funny word? It's in caps. It's all in caps. I don't know if that is supposed to inform us about where the laugh wait, is. Static electricity. What, don't we what do we call that? Like what so blankets cause static sparks. electricity? Sparks. Yeah, sparks. You call it sparks. Yeah. Did he forget that that's the word he was supposed to change to what a dumb kid would say? Have like you ever fireworks? written a rough draft of an email and then accidentally sent it to somebody? Yeah. And you're yeah, like, it's like that. Ah, Sparks was a placeholder. I'm so sorry. I right. sent that email to you. Right. I should have said like lightning, right? Lightning yeah. or fireworks. Yeah. When I rub my feet on this blanket, there are sp he That's exactly what it is. Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't Jeff Keen write, uh, mommy, when I put this blanket on me, it makes me warmer. The dog looks embarrassed to be in the strip. Yeah. The dog's staring, expressionless, like, no, no, Jeff. Is that his name? Jeffy, you, 
not sparks, another word that's like sparks that you can you can't conjure the word sparks. So you're going to say another word. Yeah. Yeah. And that it's unbelie it's unbelievable. Now, here's what's unbelievable. And this gets put in a newspaper. Here's what's unbelievable is fucking Jack off McGillicuddy Dagwood is standing in the living room <laughs> and off screen you hear Dagwood will you give me $20 to pay for my new sweater $20 and the dog turns around and looks up and the second frame is she says it's the latest hip length model this sweater is like a second set of skin on Blondie's <laughs> supple pouting breasts. It clings to her midsection. Supple it pouting. is her right breast is so fucking perfectly formed. It's unbelievable. And then he's he's gay. That's it. Dagwood's gay. <laughs> he goes, I see why they call it hip length. It comes down just to my wallet. You Oh. You should, the only reason you should be working is to buy things like that sweater for your fucking beautiful wife to wear. Unless look you're at, a Look at her image. Look at the figure. I know. The waist is like impossibly small. Well, she takes care of herself. She does core work. But the breasts are all natural. The thing about Blondie is she's had him since she was a young girl, and this strip has been going on since the 30s. Well, that's so, quite a bustier then, I'll tell you that. It's a great bustier. But I just I just can't say it enough. I mean, wh where that's are this true. guy's priorities? It's, it's other men and it's sandwiches. Those are Dagwood's priorities, as far as <laughs> I'm concerned. I like it. I right. like it. All right, listen, Mike, I'll be in Phoenix until Monday. I'm coming back. I'm going to get my booster shot. Hopefully, I'll have a better reaction than my fucking weak-ass wife. Wait, your family got the booster. Why didn't you? Because I am in Phoenix telling jokes and doing no, and doing Sunday I, papers, and I didn't want to be sick. A week, I got mine a week ago. I'm going to get it on Monday or Tuesday. Any right, what was your reaction when you got it? Uh, oh, I was like, thank you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, zero reaction. I forgot I got it. Nice. Uh, same. By the way, I got, I went in because my, I told you my ears were, it was crazy, but I went into my general guy and they're like, hey, while you're here, you want a flu shot? And they're like, we highly recommend it. Um, like November's the time to get it. I'm like, yeah, fine, whatever. So I got it. And they're like, you know, listen, there could be later on, you know, blah, 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 your arm could be, you know, all the side effects, possible side effects. This is how unaware I was that I got the flu shot or even the vaccine. I totally forget about it. And anyway, I'm in the shower the next day. I'm showering. and I'm like, what the fuck is that? Like, I have a skin tag? And it was... <laughs> And it was the little uh, Band-Aid that they put yeah. on after. Like, <laughs> even feeling the Band-Aid, I didn't remember I had gotten yeah. the flu shot in that arm. Dude, I got to get the flu shot, I got to get my booster, and I got to get the, the um, what's the other thing? Shingles. I got to get that shingles vaccine. All right. Well, I'm that... pro-vax. Give me every vax. I'll take, I'll take all of them. Are you getting the first or second? The, the, the shingles vax is two shots. Oh, is it really? Shit. So I'll tell you this. I got the second, so I went in uh, last year, and the guy, I, my gen, I, I basically would go to the doctor once a year, and so I go in there, and he's like, uh, "All right, you got the first one already." I'm like, "I did. I had no idea." And he goes, "So you're gonna get the second uh, shingles vaccine? There's two of them, and is the follow up?" And I'm like, "Fine." So he gives it to me. Fine. I, again, I'm so unaware of it. That night in the middle of the night, I have what a lot of people are describing as their side effects from the uh, the other vaccines. I'm shivering so furiously. <laughs> I, I was freezing. I was under the covers, breathing, trying to warm up. And then I like peered my head out. I'm on fire. And there's a sweatshirt on a chair. Uh, I mean, five feet away. And I'm like, too far, too far. <laughs> and I just go back <laughs> under the covers. Like there was no way I was wow. going to get up. Yeah, Jesus. it was bad. And I'm like, what? E e even with that, I didn't put it together that it was the uh, shingles vaccine. Oh, so you're just not a, a very smart guy in general. 
there's that. Yeah. But it's also these things don't affect me. So I have yeah. no, I don't keep it in mind. I like, I don't look back. I just forget all of it. But Laura, my sister, said she got hit really hard by the shingles also. So that's the one to keep an eye out for. All right. So I got four shots to get now, and I'll <laughs> gladly take them all, and I'll do it for the United States of America. The only other option is you go in with a fake ass, fake arm, fake other arm, probably at this point. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. Well, we want to thank, of course, the great people over at Midcoast Media, Chris Denman and Beth Hoops and Keith. Thank you guys so much. We want to thank our sponsors. Don't forget, go to buyraycon.com slash papers and use the code HOLIDAY to get 15% off your Raycon order. And also, you want to go to uh, my bookie and put in promo code uh, papers and you'll get yourself uh, you'll double your first deposit up to a thousand dollars and that'll do it I will uh, we'll talk to you guys next week and the yes song is called your move did it did it did it did it did it is that song mm. all right I'll listen to it now move on back two squares send an instant karma to me anyway it's all about the queen's moves and stuff geeks nice I don't want to see a documentary about how they wrote their chess song. No, I think that would get very... Well, you know, now that this Beatles thing is so big, there's there's going to be more serious rock documentaries made where they're going to find old footage of Zeppelin or uh, the Stones and they're going to start releasing it because that oh, footage no, there has is to the be Stones. out there. You know, they have that footage of him writing Get Back like in the moment. There's footage of them... Just three of them facing each other, uh, I believe. I mean, it's Keith and Mick, and maybe Jones was the third one. And they are kind of mumbling sympathy for the devil. That's on YouTube. Oh, I've seen that. I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. That's out there for sure. Mm. Um, All righty, man. All right. Um, See you later. Let's watch part three by next week. Take it ish. Take it ish. Here we go. All right. Read all about it. Okay. Okay. Read all about it. Okay. Okay. Read all about it. Okay. Okay.